morning everyone this is ranger rob i hope you're having a blessed day and uh thought i'd stop in the green room here where we, uh, we got all of our seeds going <laughs> so uh, we have a lot of tomatoes and we transplanted a lot of broccoli and more tomatoes over here sure he's got some flowers going over here and uh the test floating raft is doing well I uh, made some modifications on the spinach side uh, using some rock, Rockwell cubes and uh, so far that's looking pretty good. Um, let's see if they're starting. No, not yet, but we're getting there. So this has been kind of a test um, floating raft um, using two inch net pots. And today is a big day. Um, let's uh, go ahead and step outside here because my puppy's out and uh, we uh, are going to <laughs> my dogs uh, we are going to uh, set up the floating wraps for the big unit in the greenhouse today uh, I've got to uh, melt the holes with my high temperature heat gun and once that's done we'll take those out to the greenhouse it's a beautiful day yes a beautiful day at uh and uh yeah here in central oregon we had a super full moon last night it was supposed to be a pink full super full moon i think it's monstrous look at the size of that is that cool or what so we got a super super moon here in central oregon and uh of course this camera never does it justice but pretty cool i didn't see the peakness but wow it was really big on my facebook page i uh we stopped and uh took a, some video it was gorgeous um anyway so we're working our way over to the shop here and uh kind of excited to get the net pot uh raft done and uh then i've got to add nutrients to one tank and we're going to start out some uh, broccoli so uh yeah big day for the greenhouse would be kind of well we get green we have potatoes in there but to actually get something started is kind of you know you build and build and build and build and then you get the little details to do uh <laughs> seems like you can never get to the point of let's start growing stuff so let's get this done all right, so we got the, uh, one of the first rafts out. Got my heat gun. It's a windy day, but <laughs> this thing's trying to fly away. So uh, all we're going to do is take a heat gun to the holes here uh, to seal up the little the little beads that come out of the uh, uh, styrofoam. Uh, it's kind of a pain. So the heat gun has definitely done the trick. Um, you got to be careful you don't run it too hot and this thing's trying to blow away come on stay there anyway <laughs> uh, i'll try to record this with the wind blowing so here we go well we got uh got the holes all melted and uh you can't leave that on too long because it wants to expand the hole just enough to melt the outer part of the uh, styrofoam to try to hold the beads in. Anyway, they are ready to go. And we're going to take them out to the greenhouse and let's go see how well they fit. All right, we got into the greenhouse. It's only 85 degrees in here. Huh. Uh, anyway, we're ready to put the floating wraps on here and see if they fit okay. So let's check it out. Okay, just like every project, there's always a little bit of slight dilemmas. So, uh, we tried to make these snug because we didn't want to expose light to as much of the water as possible to prevent algae. So, uh, we're about, oh, a little less than a quarter inch, a little bit too, too wide. 
So the way I'm going to fix that is I brought my uh, heat gun out here and I'm going to melt the edges just a little bit uh, on two sides till we get the diameter just right. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> We definitely measured it close so let me get that done. All right, so I got the first one in. It's still pretty snug, but I kind of like it. Uh, but you can see I've got it floating. You can see the water. Uh, it's pretty snug. I kind of like that because the more less air, the less exposure to light to the water and the nutrients, the less likely I'm going to have problems with algae. So I'm going with it. So I'm going to melt this one down and. Uh, Go from there. Alright, we got the second one in place. Uh, still a snug fit, but I kind of like the idea of uh, keeping it snug. Uh, what I'll need to do as water levels go down is occasionally just give it a little push just to make sure it seals it's floating with the water. But uh, there we go. And uh, the one this is going to be the one that we uh, uh, start the broccoli in. So we're going to start with this tank. We've determined, we did the calculations uh, by a 4x4. Actually it's 45 inches each way and 6 inches deep. But we went with 5. And calculated uh, that these are holding 41 gallons of water. So that's what we're going to calculate with. We're going to basically calculate with 45 when we put the... Uh, master blend in and the other uh, uh, Epsom salt and also calcium nitrate so all right we're ready to go and we'll be turning on the water pump well not the water pump but the aerators on this and uh, add in our broccoli and that's the first thing we'll be growing and uh, get those started today so here we go all right guys so I topped off the tank I have the air stone started up uh, they will run continuously and I brought my uh, chemicals in I'm basing it off 40 gallons so uh, I think on my master blend I'll have to do uh, 16 tablespoons of that also with my uh, uh, calcium nitrate and then one teaspoon per five gallons on my magnesium uh, on my Epsom salt and uh, that'll take eight uh, teaspoons, not tablespoons, teaspoons. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm ready to do that. I actually, I measure out the master blend and the Epsom salt at once, add water in this little uh, container I have here and, and mix it up really good. And I do the calcium nitrate separately. Um, they recommend that uh, based on uh, uh, how the uh, chemicals work together. So let's go ahead and get the nutrients in here. Then we'll put the floating raft on. And then the next step is uh, uh, working on getting at least uh, some uh, broccoli started. That's about all I can do right now.
Well, this uh, tank's ready to go. It's got all of its nutrients. Uh, I've got the aerators running, and all I have to do is add net cups and also whatever uh, plants I want to grow, which will probably just do the uh, broccoli and uh, go from there. So uh, I'll show that in a little bit. So the other thing I just did is uh, I'm committing this system to a timer which will go off in about three minutes so I'm kind of anxious to see if that's working okay and every once in a while I like to turn these uh, to see if I'm uh, getting a little sun to some of the other I have a lot of starters that didn't work due to the fact that we didn't store them properly so I got replacements coming but some took but not very many so my first 50 I bet you uh, I'd be lucky if I got 10 of them that actually took because we stored them in the house too long and didn't do it right didn't know better uh, so I got another 30 coming in and I may actually have to order another 20 uh, I just got a lot of these that didn't start but there is a few that did so uh, we we're fortunate just to get that so live and learn we made a mistake so now I'm waiting to make sure this timer comes on properly and uh because uh, I you got to be careful not though I can't run the tank dry or I'll burn up my pump so the timers have got to work yes people I didn't forget about the onions they're actually doing pretty good I can't complain uh, considering they've had some cold nights but starting to see a lot more green uh, I still have about four that I don't think took I do have transplants going in a green room and I'm hardening them up right now and uh, going from there so looks like uh, one of my little uh, pipes here the cap popped off so we're going to get that fixed it's been a little bit longer in the day I have uh, I've actually um, planted some more well actually my first time some iceberg lettuce now that we got the hydroponics then I took one of my broccolis and uh, it's in a rock, a small rock wall uh, cube and I took a larger rock wall cube and wrapped it around that and I installed, I thought I'd do an overnight test to see how well that starter does because uh, we get kind of cold nights and so I'm going to be curious to see how well uh, it does in the greenhouse so let's go take a look at what I did so I uh, installed my first broccoli right in here and uh, I uh, added a little more rock oil cube to it to make it firm in the holder and uh, what I'm concerned about is at nighttime here the greenhouse still gets down to let's take a look We got down to 26 in here last night. Now I don't know how long, but uh, it's also 90 degrees in here. So I want to see how well that little uh, guy hangs in there before I put any more plants in. Uh, that's the problem we have with Central Oregon and we still have cold mornings. Now if it's only for a short period of time, uh, and it's getting 80 or 90 degrees in here it'll be interesting to see how well and how resilient <coughs> the uh, new seedling is they say if you grow up grow your seedling up in without soil it doesn't go through the shock of using nutrients these have been on a mild nutrient and then kind of moved up and and they should accept full nutrient pretty easily so Tomorrow's video will show you how well that first seedling does and see if there's any lessons learned. Uh, I think I might get some of the clay pellets to put into uh, the little pots um, to just kind of hold the plant in place a little bit and the bubbles will tend to want to move it around. So I'm pretty happy with what I did there. but. Um, my next experiment will be with uh, the little clay uh, 
I don't know what to call them. <laughs> Little pods. I don't Anyway, uh, uh, and see how well those work and see what I like better. So it's kind of funny, you know, when you <laughs> sit down in here, it's hot. It's kind of funny when you watch all this and watch others do it. It looks really easy. But then when you uh, actually do it, you know, it's little things from taking your seedling to a little bigger, keeping everything with nutrients, try not to use too much. Uh, that gradual change to get them into this greenhouse is uh, a little tougher. Maybe it's not as tough as I think it is, but I'm just worried about it. But uh, I do recommend, this is really cool uh, to do. And uh, I'm excited to see how well this goes. I still haven't had the opportunity to fire up the uh, Dutch bucket system because none of my sibling <laughs> uh, plants are uh, ready to go yet, but we're getting close. And I'm still worried about the cold nights. So this is the first plant that we've put in here uh, to see if it can handle the cold nights. Uh, this is not a heated greenhouse, and maybe I need to run a heater. Or maybe we'll put a, a little light bulb above the uh, floating raft uh, until these cold nights are gone. So we're, we're, I think we're pretty much away from snow, knock on wood, and any really, really cold, cold mornings. But we do get down into uh, uh, as low as 29, uh, 30 area, just below the little bit freezing mark. So... I'm going to be really surprised to see how well those that plant does. I'm also kind of hoping that the warmness of the water might help. So that's just my thoughts. I could be wrong. Uh, this is new to me and that's what our channel is all about. Don't be afraid to try something new and don't be afraid to fail. Uh, we've had lots of fails. But um, going from each step is as, as easy as it looks on other people's videos and stuff, sometimes I find it to be a little bit nerve-wracking. But uh, and, and I think in some cases, depending on your region, it depends on your region and your climate too. So anyway, uh, let's let's move on. It's been a really good day. We gotten some. Uh, we made some achievements. Uh, we got the raft holes all sealed up. We got a tight fit. Um, we got our first broccoli in, uh, installed and uh, it's going to be questionable to see how well it does in the next day or two so stay tuned for that uh, we also uh, have some other tools and, and equipment coming in and uh, this week and also we got some more strawberries coming uh, actually next Monday so uh, yeah this hydroponics <laughs> Although it looks really easy and stuff, there's still concerning areas. There's going from stage to stage to stage is kind of uh, crazy. Uh, the other thing is when you're first setting things up, you have to deal with, is your plumbing good? Is the water system working? Are you getting your nutrients right? Um, and if you've never done it before, uh, it's a little bit intimidating. And uh, then when you watch other people that have been doing this for a long time, they make it sound so easy. But uh, I, you know, I, I'm. That's what we. That's what we're here for: is showing uh, people that are new or beginners, uh, like us. Uh, we, we just want to show you. We're kind of like the next step. If you're thinking about it, we're thinking about it and are starting to do it. That's the only difference. And so, uh, everybody will do a little different. Everybody has a little bit better engineering or, or. Uh, <laughs> building abilities than, than, than me and Sherry and uh, anyway but yeah it's kind of exciting I can't wait to see first of all if that broccoli makes it through the night with the colder nights and uh, after a day or two if it's looking good we'll go ahead and plant a couple more rows of broccoli in there and let it rip and uh, you know we had to put our nutrients in today had to get the aerator stones working the way we want to and uh, it's all very exciting. So uh, uh, I hope you're enjoying it, and, and uh, I hope you can see how excited we are. And uh, we will make more mistakes. I can guarantee you that. 
with the Dutch buckets. That's the next one. I can't wait to get them fired up, but I want to make sure my tomatoes are strong enough to handle the cold nights. Um, we're almost over the cold nights, but uh, Central Oregon has kind of a funny growing season here, so we have to be careful. So uh, we may have to put some growing lights in there and stuff. I have to be kind of careful because I only have 30 amps to deal with uh, with power out there. And remember, I got an aerator and I'm going to have a pump going for the uh, Dutch bucket. So can I handle a uh, heat lamp or a growing lamp in there to, uh, uh, if I need to? So uh, that's the only problem with our greenhouses. We're limited on power. So, uh, and we have to be safe. I have to use very heavy gauge wires so we don't have any problems or trip. You know, everything's on a circuit. So if I have a problem, it'll trip. But you still want to try to be safe. So uh, anyway, those are a little bit of my thoughts I thought I'd share with you. And I want to thank everybody for watching. Please take the time to like. Really hit the like button. That helps our videos get out. Uh, leave a comment. That helps too. Um, if you didn't like the video, even a dislike uh, would help. Um, it's all good. And uh, but we'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, let us know if you're thinking about doing this kind of stuff. Or are you thinking about doing homesteading or moving out to the country a little more. We'd love to hear from you. So uh, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to all the new subscriber, <laughs> subscribers we've been getting. And uh, uh, let us know some of the things you'd like us to uh, uh, do more details on. I know I got a lot of stuff here and I walk right by it. And it might be something that you want to ask questions about. And I just need to know. So anyway, guys, take care. Uh, may you have a blessed day. And uh, be safe. Talk to you later. Bye. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.